Hi, I'm Joanne Dicknair, Mima, with It's Storytime, Mima, an answered prayer for stories that point children to God on the Truth Network for Kids. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening to the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. Coming to you from an entrenched barricade deep in the heart of Central North Carolina. Masculine Journey After Hours. A time to go deeper and be more transparent on the topic covered on this week's broadcast. So sit back and join us on this adventure. The Masculine Journey After Hours starts here now. Welcome to Masculine Journey After Hours. We're uh, glad to have you with us today. It is, uh, it's June already. Can you guys believe it? It's It's hard to believe. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, quickly approaching mid-June. Man. We're getting close to half this year being gone already. Yeah. Summer will be here right around the corner. I'd say jingle bells be playing before you know it. Yeah. If you were in North Carolina, you felt like summer this morning. I'm saying it was pretty bad out. Mm. But uh, Andy, why don't you tell us what we're talking about today? It's your topic. What you talking about, Sam? Exactly. (laughs) So this is, uh, I just had a, something in my spirit. When I was reading Malachi 3, 13 through 18, there's a story there where God is listening to the two different camps of people. One, where they don't feel like he's being a just God and really taking care of things. And then a group that says, you know, we fear God and we, we, we trust what he's doing. And he God kind of listens in attentively. To it is is how it puts it, and and that just kind of um, kind of pricked my heart. It was like whenever God listens, and of course we know God's listening to us all the time, but that's in the scriptures for a reason. God, that means it got God's attention, and you know we're a talk show, we're a podcast, we talk about these things, and we all have talked about, or except Rodney, he's got it all together. But a lot Thank of us you. have have questioned, you know. When we didn't get when th- things didn't um, happen that we would expect, it's my lissery. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and here in a minute, his clip will refer to him. Have it all together. All right. But all right, now I got to get back on track. But there's certain <laughs> expectations, and when you don't receive those, sometimes you want to bail on your faith. And I think this is God has a book of remembrance for those who feared Him and can, hung in there. And there's a lot in the scriptures about hanging in there and staying with it and not giving up your faith. You know, we, just, we hear in James about how our faith is tried. But I think what we talk about, how we talk about it, I mean, you can talk about it. You can say, oh, God's great, but in your heart you may not be really feeling that or not trusting him. Um, I think it's important in what we t- t- talk about with each other to keep that – Understanding, we're living in a larger story. We're at war. We're not. Things aren't always going to turn out the way we want. But also, I think, you know, you look at these people that were uh, negative against God. You know, that you're not, you're not running the universe, right, God? That's pretty much what they were saying. Is that it's kind of how we can make agreements that we've mm-hmm. talked about on here many, many times. Is it's what you believe in your heart about God. It's important, and so. That's the what we're going to talk about on the show here. So. It's basically the I'm better than you. Yeah. Whoever the I am is and whoever the you are, yeah. I'm better. Yeah. I know, you know, I, it, it's it's who's the focus of the universe? You know, is it us and what we get or what we want? Obviously, it's, it's me, Andy. Come yeah, on. Yeah, I, I know. You got it all together. I think, Thank you. I know. God kind of put Job in his place yeah, with that yeah, whole question. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of arrogance, uh, Rodney's clips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was – reading through there and what stuck to me was the arrogance part and I wanted to go find some clips on arrogance and I really I was late to the game and getting this done so I was like ooh here's some arrogance versus confidence I'm like let's just see what they have to say and I liked this clip the best this was actually if you looked it up in YouTube it's what is the difference between confidence and arrogance and It's a decent little short clip. It's not very long at all. And what I did is I took the summary of it, but I think it at least sets a really good tone, even though it's set in a worldly picture, because again, the the way the world sees you overcome arrogance and become just confident, which there's not always an easy way to tell arrogance from confidence until you get to know someone and really, but when you're looking at that picture, 
they say in the world, you do it. You have control to become confident. And I would reject that wholeheartedly. It's like, well, no, that's actually the arrogant part is that you don't have control. And when you give it up to God, like you should, things, even though they don't just go well, they're not just perfect. There may be tribulation, but in the end, you still <clears throat> are going to live a much more humble and pride less life. So why don't we go ahead and listen to that and we'll talk some more. Now, let's sum this all up, okay. What is the difference between confidence and arrogance? The difference is humility. And if you don't have any, and if you're full of pride, then remember this, a proud man is always looking down on other things and other people. And of course, as long as you're looking down, you can never see anything above you. Now remember, showing that you are humble while you are confident is not a weakness, but arrogance is a huge weakness. A confident and humble man or woman is not weak at all. But arrogance is a huge weakness and it is disguised as a strength. Because while confidence lets you believe that you can overcome your weaknesses, with arrogance you can't even see your own weaknesses, while everybody else can. So there's just a lot of then comparison that I kind of did just over time, just trying to think of other things that you would compare on the what would be more on the confidence side or the arrogant side. Obviously, the Bible has a lot to say about pride and humility. I mean, there's just one thing mm -hmm. after another of how that's very contrasted. And again, submission is a big part of humility. They, they kind of touch on some of that there, thinking about others first and things. But when you have humility on the confidence side and pride as the opposite, you know, God is confidence side because I have confidence in him. And then it's on the self is the arrogant side, really. Opposite of what they would say inside that you know, discussion. And then secure or insecure. Secure is the confidence and arrogance is insecurity. To try to even advertise yourself. You know, do you have to speak up and speak out and say, hey, look at me? That's the arrogant side. Hey, I need somebody, somebody to affirm what it is I say and think because I am the center of everything. Surrender and submission, I talked about a little bit, versus control and ruling. Real versus fake. Strength, which is in the Lord, versus the weakness. Look at me, look at me. That meekness we talked about with, with, with Christ. And I think the ultimate in arrogance is the one who says there is no God. That is right there. You look around, you look at creation. All the facts that we see in science says that there was a beginning and that Everything in this world supports the biblical narrative in what you look at. And then you find things in the world when worldly people look at the evidence and they keep coming up with, well, okay, we're just going to rewrite the script again. We're going to rewrite the script. I would love to see how many times in that worldly perspective as they've looked at the fossil records and all this stuff and they, they look at the same evidence, but have a completely different interpretation – as to how many times it's changed and all these articles that keep coming out, how can that actually all go together? It makes no sense because they have to change their story all the time where God's story just doesn't change. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It just stays the same. It's That's the simple, confident way that, the, that God brings us to his knowledge. Yeah, so as I was listening to your clip, which is... You know, pretty cool, really. But they talked about that, you know, arrogance is always looking down. And I was, you know, really thinking that Harold has this huge advantage. <laughs> <laughs> and I always knew he was humble, but I, I, I really hadn't understand all the complexities that were involved with that. Yeah. Yeah. Back to his poem he read earlier today. You know, the shorter you are, the more humble you are, I guess, huh? God will get you for that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Andy, go ahead. Um, yeah, just on that, you know, tying it at the scripture, it said your words have been arrogant against me. And that's what what Rodney was saying there is that, you know, it's an arrogant thing to sit there and tell God, you know, 
the people are like, what? How have we said spoken against you, God? It is pointless to serve God. I mean, and I think, I think what we keep getting at there, what I keep seeing is that there's so many uh, of people who started with God and people who are with God now that have come to a crossroads in their life. And it's like, is this working for me or not? I think it was alluded to in one of the other clips. And, and as you look, as you get deeper into your faith, it's not those things. If everything was, you made every judgment on whether God came through all the time for you, you know, there would be nobody with faith if that was the sole criteria that we make our decision. And it's that it's that thing where, where I'm going to choose this creator God who's come after me. And I'm going to respond to that, and I'm going to see what happens. And that's a part of the faith. God isn't doesn't want us following him blindly. He wants us to have faith. But he comes after us, and we have to respond. But then as we mature, I think we begin to realize that it's not about getting everything you want. Um, it's it's more about finding out who he is as a person and the way that we would want somebody to pursue us and we should pursue others is over who that person is and what not what they can give us. So question on that. You, I don't think you're saying it's not okay to be authentic with God. No. Nope. Right? Because there are times... You can have some big boy conversations. Absolutely. If you can't have it with God, who can you have it with? No doubt. No, that's not right. what I'm saying. Right. And, and so you're talking about total abandonment of faith and I'm out of here. Right. And not giving God a chance to respond or anything. I'm done. Right. But it's okay to be frustrated and have oh, conversations absolutely. with God in your It's like any other relationship. Absolutely. Yep. Right. I mean, God already knows you're mad. So right. you're the only one you're hiding right. it from. You're yeah. not hiding it from him. Look and at so, the, look at the Psalms. I mean, the whole thing is David crying about stuff. You know, or yeah. I shouldn't say the whole thing. The other half, <laughs> he's happy. The, the other, other half, the yeah. other half, he's praising for him. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. at least half there. Yeah, the yeah. whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get a Bible, man. Yeah. Yeah. Get a, <laughs> <laughs> nice, Sam. <laughs> nice. But but that's the one thing we do have to really be cautious of is are we doing something that is bringing God's character down? changing something about him that isn't true are we are we lying about him when we're doing that it's fine when we're like hey it's all about me and it's my weakness and i don't understand and lord help me but when it comes down to you lord are to blame or something like that that's starting to get to the that's starting to get us into the we're blaspheming god because we're saying well you caused this you fault you're you're at fault you're the one that's bad i can't be blame i don't know that i fully agree mm-hmm because I think authenticity with your father is important. And if I'm feeling that, me voicing it will help me articulate it, which will let God work in it. Yeah. Right? The more I shove it down, the more I try not to do it. And everybody's different. I get that. I'm not saying I'm going to go say, you know, God, you're a blank, 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 whatever. Right? That's all I'm saying. But when you say, God, I'm mad about this. And I wanted you to come through and you didn't. And I'm really frustrated and I'm really hurt. You know, and I really needed you to do that. You know, at least I'm being authentic with him and sharing my heart, which will give him a place to work, right? As long as I'm open to hear and, back. And, and that's exactly where I was at, particularly through some broken relationship. I, I couldn't understand that because I felt like I had served God a lot in my life, and there was a lot of brokenness in there. But through that, I got clarity, and God was gracious. God can handle us yelling and screaming at us. Heck, you, you're moving towards God whenever you're angry with him. You can't keep that forever, but he's a big God. He can understand it. If you had a problem with your earthly father, you would let him know. So there is that certain response. Again, it's whether you chuck your faith or you hang in there and you say, God, I don't understand, but I need – and he doesn't have to explain everything. Or even to quote Sam. Yeah. Right? Do you trust his heart? All right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. I mean, I think that's where he's drawing the line yep. is to say – Wait a minute! You did this on purpose to hurt me. No, yeah, right. That that exactly. Yeah. That's 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 making a judgment call on God, and at that point in time, yeah. it's no longer a big boy talk. Yeah, it, it go. You, you, there is a line that you shouldn't cross. Okay. Just like I shouldn't have yeah. crossed that line with my wife. Like think that you know it's got. It's a matter of trusting each other's heart. Right. Even though I'm totally upset about you know those short jokes. Yeah, the, the <laughs> thing about the <laughs> the thing about a show like this is we're we're not talk we're not really talking absolutes on some of this stuff. I mean you there's you can't just um, 
say you can it's a good practice to go yelling at god that's not what i no. would say it at all but there are times when you cry out again it gets like back to the psalms and david there's a lot of psalms of, of frustration anger a variety of emotions with god and it's totally real and it's totally honest god didn't have to leave, put that in the scripture he put it in there for a reason it's for us and so I think uh, that's a, a big part of it is, is in our growth and maturity as mm-hmm. to being more open about letting God come in. I think that's where true faith is born and tested. So. You know, that's, that's it. It's, it's to the point of coming to understand there's a yield between you and God. Yeah. You yeah. know, I think, um, I think uh, it talks about in James where it talks about um, – uh, the wisdom of man and the wisdom of mm-hmm. God, and I like one of the segments in that in that scripture says, "Willing to yield." Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it talks about self control. Now, I understand this. I don't think another. I don't think of a fruit. I don't think you can uh, present any of God's fruit mm-hmm. without self control. Mm-hmm. You know, you can try to demonstrate love all you want, but if you can't, if you don't have self control, you know, it, mm-hmm. it's not going to work. I don't care which one you put up to the candle; it won't work. Yeah. It's all about you humbling yourself that's well that's what christ did in the garden remember he's looking at suffering for us mm-hmm. not because of what he did but and he he actually went what three times god i'm really not my will it, it, you know he kept bowing his will mm-hmm. I, I know that I, I know you but you know if i gotta drink this cup i will mm-hmm. but that that we were talking about that humility, that mm-hmm. surrender, that, that example he said. That, hey, I'm struggling with There's a point. They said, you know, he, he, he's sweating like blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that is intense. Yeah. Wrestling with God is what we're talking about here. Really laying out there to God. And I don't think he did it in a really hum, a quiet voice. I think, Father, I'm struggling with this. Mm-hmm. I, I'm really, my heart, I, I I really don't want to go there, yeah. but not my will. And I, I know right. that's a battle in me, me, not my will, his will, because mm-hmm. his ways are higher than my, and I can't understand how. But I, you got into it a while ago, the heart. That's right. We trust yeah. he has got good intentions for us. And mm-hmm. Satan, that's one of the things he attacked in the garden. Right. You know, yeah. getting him doubts that we can doubt. God's got Doubt him, the goodness of God. Yeah. Yes, yes. He's always about that, trying to separate us yeah. any way he can, mm-hmm. any way he can. I do know that I haven't stayed mad at God when I've shared it with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because he'll do something to break that mm-hmm. in me, you know, and I'm talking with him. Mm-hmm. Right. It is different than pulling away. And I've done that in my life. Yeah. Pull away and not give God credence and lose my faith. You know, yeah. I've done that early on. And, and there's a big difference between the two. But, you know, God knows our thoughts. God knows our heart. He knows yep. he where we're at, he you know, and so voicing honesty with him right. is important and, and, and letting him work, mm-hmm. you know, but if, like any conversation, you have to be willing to listen if you're, if you're going to talk. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. yep. Good, Rodney. Well, the obvious part of that conversation, you know, who's right and who's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's coming to that humility. We're saying, okay, I'm wrong. And mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, work with me, help me. Yeah. But in the end. You have to come to the point like David always did. Yeah, I'm wrong. You're right. I'm going to trust in you. And that's that's the part of that that growth. And we have those moments that it's so hard to bear up under. And there's a lot of people, like you're just talking, I just know a few people, other people that had deaths in their family recently and things of that nature. It's just one thing on top of the other within the last year. It's like, wow. You, you try to watch somebody like that, and you're like, what a testimony to stand mm-hmm. underneath that. And, you know, another thing is, are you expecting God in your situation? Are you expecting God? Are you going to sit and muddle in yourself? <laughs> I like the way you put that muddle in yourself. That's where Satan wants us. Yeah, absolutely. So in that yeah. whole maturing that Rodney was talking about, you just think about earthly relationships and raising children. And the child doesn't they start out getting everything they want and then they you pull back and you you don't spoil them and and all and and they're constantly there's that push and pull of is your heart good towards me Mm -hmm. and that to me is the maturity that we experience not identical but very similar to with god um and you grow in it and finally the child begins to realize yeah they withheld that from me but it was right for me Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, they withheld that for me, but I know their heart was good for me, and I didn't see it at the time, but it was i'm I'm glad they're in my life to help me guide guide me through this or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
So, which brings us to your clip. I, uh, yeah. So I have a clip where I wanted to really get guys talking, and because it, it talks about here about how you had a conversation with, um, like it, it appeared to be multiple groups or multiple people in a group and there's a mixed bag of guys different feelings Uh, it's from the movie courageous and it's a bunch of guys that kind of tell their stories about their father wounds um good father bad for the father kind of thing what we talk about all the time but this is the point is is they're having this discussion of about faith and its importance in their life were you gonna say something robbie no okay they're in there wanting to know what we're talking about. Obviously. We're not talking about anything. I mean, this steak was great. I think it tastes just like my dad's, and that guy used to grill out all the time. Yeah, mine too. And speaking of dads, they emailed the sheriff the other day. Think that thing was accurate? I do. I grew up seeing that kind of stuff all the time. You know, I wonder where all the good fathers went to. Ain't that the truth? What? Where were you talking about your dad? Were you like an usher or something at your church? Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. As soon as the church service started, he'd step out back for a smoke. You know, one time, he says to me, I better not catch you drinking. Had a beer in his hand when he said it. My mom used to nag him. That is, till they got divorced. It's not like I don't love the guy, but it's kind of hard to respect a hypocrite. What about you, David? Mm, I had a good dad, I guess. I mean, the guy wasn't perfect. My parents split up, he had an affair. But I think he regretted it, and I struggled with it for a while, but... You know, divorce just comes with the territory now. I disagree, man. Divorce happens because you're making an option. Nathan, you don't always know what's going to happen. You know, people change. You can't always work stuff out. Sometimes you need to part way. I think I agree with Nathan. Thank you. Uh, people don't fight for their marriage anymore. That's right. When do you get married? Have some kids. You're going to figure out real quick how much you don't know. Man, if it wasn't for my faith in God, I'd be in a tailspin right now. Yeah, me too. Mm. Look, guys, not everyone believes in that stuff. You guys are all religious, and that's fine, but you can't think religion is the only way to live your life. Religion? Yeah. It didn't work out for your parents. Didn't they get a divorce? <laughs> That's the problem. They were never married. Listen, my dad had six children from three different women. And I was the fifth child. Before I was born, he had already left. I'm 37 years old, and I've never met my biological father. It looks like you turned out all right. Well, that's because a man in my neighborhood named William Barrett mentored me as a teenager, taught me about God and Every Father's Day, he's the one that I call. I'm telling you, man, not having a father as a child, man, scarred me in more ways than I can count. If you just listen to that and you just think about, okay, what if God was attentively listening to that conversation, which is a movie, but in real life, those conversations happen. His heart was obviously broken for those that have been damaged by their fathers that had caused a, a poor portrayal of who God was. But then he was also blessed by to see a guy that had been fathered by somebody that wasn't even his father that God had used for that. And, you know, the the thing is, is in those conversations, um, we have an opportunity to to tell our story, to give people hope. And that's kind of what I feel like we have listeners and hopefully we have (laughs) – God listens directly in, and it and it glorifies Him in the fact that we've been through, we've all been through some stuff, and to give people hope that, um, you know, you've got to give God more than just a, a little bit, a little crack. You've got to give Him some time and let Him come into the situation and prove to who His heart towards you. And um, you know, I think we testify on here quite often of where it doesn't look good for us in our situations. And, you know, personally, like I said earlier about my situation, I was, this was, I'd really gotten serious about God, got in this ministry, but I was still really struggling. I was stuck at a point because I didn't understand some stuff. And um, I think that I got the word of the year clarity around that time. And I did begin to get some clarity. And I think I thought I was going to get more clarity about my situation. I got clarity on what was important in a deeper way. And I soon after that, now that I think about it, it was actually the year that I really delve into um, letting God father me, really letting God father me. And um, so, again, uh, we all go through some stuff. It talks in James, again, about our faith being tried, and it's precious because it's not, you know, a faith that hasn't been tried is not really faith, in my opinion. And... God wants people who really choose him 
and he understands that we are in a war. Yeah. But to find his love and all that, um, I don't know. I just I, the idea of of him listening in and and there being a book of remembrance from that. I want him to remember my name because of what I found in him. There was one point that jumped out at me was, are we willing to fight, he said, for your marriage? Mm -hmm. You know, because it is a battle. And and, and there is going to be differences in any relationship. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with fighting. It's how you fight and what you're fighting Mm -hmm. for. What's your goal? Is it to win or to really to come to an understanding Mm -hmm. or to share your heart? Mm -hmm. And that's the same way of God. Are we willing to fight? He's willing to fight with us. He'll wrestle us. (laughs) He'll pin us. Well, yeah, and it's yeah. it's a fight against the enemy. Yes, you know, trying to make not to make agreements with him, yeah. not to yes. to yeah. have things that give him a foothold or pull yeah. your faith away. Yeah, yeah, like these, right. these guys made an agreement that hey, wait a minute, it, it's better to divorce than to, for us to keep fighting. Right. Yeah, and, and that, that's that delusion. I think sometimes Satan throws out. If you find your soulmate and everything's going to fall into place. Yeah. Instead, and then he'll come, well, it's not falling into place. You must have married the wrong one. Yep. See, that's yep. just the way he, he he's just always scheming against us in everything that we do. Yeah, blame shifting. Yes. yes. You know, did God really say? And then he keeps finding somebody else to blame other yep. than you. Yes. And that's, really, he is just a master at getting us to blame somebody other than ourselves. Instead of realizing, hey, wait a minute, we live in a, we're broken people living in a broken world, and we need a savior. Mm hmm. We do. And a great place for you to go spend some time with your Savior Amen. is at a boot camp. And we have one coming up. Where yes, can I we go? do. Well, you could go to masculinejourney.org. And wow. what would you do there? You would register for the boot camp and coming when, up. When can I go? You can go now. I can go now to the website. When can I go to the boot camp? Well, uh, November 21st through 24th. Oh, thank you, Sam. That's yeah. very helpful. Yeah, this year you can go. And it is a basic boot camp, masculinejourney.org. Go love somebody well this week and let your heart be loved by the Father well this week. Why don't you do that for yourself? We'll talk with you next week. This is the Truth Network.